Right, progress update. So, as you can see here, we've got a couple pretty dodgy looking ports. Yeah, uh, they're not too clean, but uh, to be completely honest, uh, it's going to be very difficult to get them 100%, um, especially in such short lengths, like you can see here. Um, I might I'd probably try, as right here it looks pinched, I think that's because uh, it started to heat up the top while I was pushing, while I was trying to stretch the bottom of it. Uh, but I've come up with a new strategy uh, for flaring, which should help avoid that. Uh, this one kind of, it turned out pretty good, except for that bulge in it right there. So that's a bit unfortunate also. Uh, by the way, this is the new length of the short port that goes into this chamber. And it'll be going right here. Uh, and this is the length of the short port that's going to be going in the big chamber. Uh, this will, two of these will be tuning the big chamber to 50 hertz, but they'll be plugged most of the time. And these two together is what used to be the port length of the of this chamber right here, which turned out to be tuned more like uh, 40 hertz because the software didn't account for the flares that I had on the port for some reason. So it was actually tuned differently to what it said. Explains a bit about the impedance curve results that I got. Yeah, this one is, it's decent from most angles, apart from there, which is really unfortunate. Uh, you can also see that with this boy, it's first, the whole thing is a round over. There's, there is probably about four centimeters of flat in this 10 centimeter port. But yeah, if you can see, it's pretty well all round. Uh, I will be, as this doesn't go to the complete uh, round over to be flush with the enclosure, I'll just be mounting it a bit deeper in the lid and bogging up around to incorporate it. And I'll spray paint and everything over it so it looks like it seamlessly flows into the port. It'll look good, which is why I'm not too disappointed by it but unfortunately batting seems to keep selling out of the specific pvc pipe that i need i even went down to a store further away and, um so i've been to two now and they were both only sold out of the 150 mil pvc <laughs> got no idea why everyone wants bunnings 150 mil pvc one meter lengths but uh, i haven't seen much car audio going on here so uh, it couldn't be that, honestly. It's weird. Um, so yeah, all these are just the old ports that are in the box. Like this port right here that was in the short chamber is these two pieces. So as you can see, they've changed quite drastically. And this one's way shorter than it used to be. Uh, and here's the rest of it that I'm using. This was the port from the big chamber, or at least uh, 10 centimeters less of the port of the big chamber. Uh, you can see the moulds and essentially the way this works is uh, these two halves uh, meet together around there and you can see it's not a particularly tight seal um, I and the reason why is because I jigsawed out uh, more than I thought I was going to need, uh, see the heat gun faces in the side there through that gap and see how hot it gets. And essentially it circulates air around and there are holes that come out that way and that way and out there and also these vents in the top that are angled just to try to get it circulating. So I've just I've got some more flaring to do. I've got another one of those short ports to make because there's two in total. But I have now essentially made two of the five ports. Uh, I had another go at making a port and as you can see it did split again but that's a really nice round over that's got on this. And I flipped it around and went to do the other direction except the heat gun was actually facing the mould like that. So what ended up happening was that right there. So that's a bit unfortunate but uh, luckily I am able to chop off just that one and a half or two centimeters and use this as the flare for one of the 
long pipes. One of those, one of the 90 centimeter ports. Uh, in total in that, there's one 15 centimeter port, which is that one right there. There's two 10 centimeter ports, which is that one right behind and was going to be this one here. And there are two 90 centimeter ports. So this, this will be the flare for one of them. Uh, I'm gonna probably be able to, well, I'll definitely be able to do another 10 centimeter port out of that piece right there. Uh, and then I'll have, I think, 14 centimeters left over. And if I'm really lucky, oh, I should be able to get two more flares out of it. So I'll be able to do another one of these and maybe even one of the long tubes exit flares. Uh, in theory, with 14 centimeters left over, I very possibly could do the rest of it, but I don't trust being able to do flares with anything less than 10 centimeters. So I might be able to do a flare, chop it off, do another flare, chop it off, and then do the final flare out of that piece. But I'll need to, I need a bit of excess on it to be able to hold the pipe in while I slide it down. And yeah, you probably noticed this cardboard ring. Uh, that's what I use to seal the top completely. Um, in order just to trap the heat in as much as possible. And key thing is to isolate the heat from inside here, which is very hot, uh, with the top of the PVC so it doesn't heat up and then melt the, the flare that I might have done previously. Uh, you can see right here that when I was, when I was flaring this piece, uh, it was in the box just like this, uh, the top bit stayed completely fine but the bottom bit got hot enough to expand this much and apart from that crack it came out pretty damn perfect so that'll that'll just be some bog um it's very hard i it's quite difficult to do it this way but um i don't know of any ports that you can buy in australia and to be honest i like this extra bit of diy aspect even if it's not perfect uh, it doesn't need to be perfect to produce a good sound. It The main point of it is that it's a flared segmented tube with a moving mass of air. And yeah, that's, that's essentially it. Even that bulge in that one right there, you can see even that bulge shouldn't affect it too much. It shouldn't be turbulent, or at least shouldn't be turbulent until higher velocities, but I, this sub shouldn't get into move in the air fast enough for that to be a problem. Something else I thought about doing is inlaying some sort of mesh and painting over it to give the dimpled effect that you see on like Bowles and Wilkins ports. Um, I reckon that'd be pretty neat, you know, it's like the golf ball skin effect. So there's a, a layer of air that doesn't move around the port in order to act like a super smooth port. Um, that's a possibility um, it'd look cool except it'd be a ton of effort to drill out <laughs> the PVC in fact it'd be virtually impossible so the only way I'd be able to do it is like inlay a, a mesh all around it and spray paint over it so it's kind of dimpled if you if you get what I mean like a, a surface kind of thing um, or I suppose if it's a skin effect I could even use just something with a bit of turbulence right on the edge with a small rise uh, but I, I won't bother with that at least for now um, if for whatever reason this doesn't sound good then I might try experimenting with something like that before I modify the box again so but yeah we'll see anyway due to the length of the recording I'm pretty sure just just port stuff is going to take up this video so uh, thanks for watching uh, if you've got any suggestions for doing ports, leave them in the comments. Uh, I've, I'm going to have finished doing all my port stuff by the time this video goes up, but if anybody else is trying to learn how to do ports, leave any suggestions in the comments. Uh, I even tried something like Fabulon, but that didn't do anything from what I can tell. Uh, but yeah, the, the main bit of advice I can give is isolate the heat between the parts you're trying to heat up and melt and bend uh, from the parts you don't want to heat up and melt and bend. 
as if the heat starts to creep up the tube as you start to apply force to it it'll just kink the tube higher up and uh, you'll end up with that deformity right there something like that a bit of a, a tumor coming off the side that one i i did in that cardboard box right there which you can kind of see a, a hole in it with there's where the heat gun was facing in but um also you want to make sure not to face the heat gun at the mold itself based away even if you rotate the pipe it's it's just not good but yeah uh thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video